So, uh, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Michael McMahon, and I'm privileged and honored to serve the people of Staten Island as a district attorney. Never more so uh, when, uh, than when we come together uh, for a statement from the community that we're about to make here today. And as you can see, I'm joined by some very important leaders uh, of the community, uh, including our Assemblyman, Charles Fall, uh, our uh, Chairman of POCHO, Mr. Scott Maurer, uh, Executive Director of POCHO, uh, Mr. Mendy Marush, thank you for the head of the Interfaith Alliance here on Staten Island, uh, one of the main imams at the Albania uh, Poetry Center, so I can comment on the uh, of course, our great uh, borough commander, uh, the gentleman who oversees all the men and women in our police department who keep us safe every day from all crimes, uh, Chief Ken Corey, uh, and the man who's hosting us here as well, uh, our dear friend, uh, Rabbi Yaakov Lairfeld of Young Israel. Uh, and I know that there are other people behind me who I'm going to introduce uh, in just a few moments. Uh, but we're here today, really, for a reason that we shouldn't have to be here today. Today, we're marking around the world more than 70 years of Yom Hashoah, uh, which is the remembrance of the Jewish Holocaust, which occurred in Europe uh, leading into and during the Second World War. And we all know, um, despite what you hear sometimes in the rhetoric out there, that more than 6 million Jews were killed during that terrible, terrible act of hate, the greatest hate crime uh, in the history uh, of the world. And what we should be doing here is saying, you know, uh, we remember that and all those lives that were lost and all those people who survived and went on to lead lives and through their examples of love uh, in the despite of hate. But unfortunately, we are standing here because hate crimes and anti-Semitism continues uh, to show its ugly head uh, around the world uh, and here in our country as well. And so we're standing in solidarity uh, with uh, Lori Kay, who was killed uh, just at the end of Passover uh, this year out in Poway, uh, California, outside of San Diego, as she took her body and flung it uh, between the 19-year-old crazy man, the hater, who was about to kill the, the, the rabbi in that uh, synagogue, in the Chabad uh, synagogue, and she, she showed the act of love. She laid down her life for another and reminded us that in, in the face of hate, the greatest tool that we have the way that we can beat hate is not with hate, but with love, as Martin Luther King taught us. The way that we can beat darkness is not with more darkness, but with light, he told us as well. And that's what we're here to do, to shed more light on the fact that even though there are hate crimes that are occurring uh, around the world and in our country, uh, that the people of Staten Island, the leaders of Staten Island, uh, take inspiration, as I said, from that Holocaust to know that we shall overcome and we shall, we shall be able to defeat that hate. Uh, and I also want to say uh, that in our office, in the district attorney's office, and I, I know Ken's going to speak in a moment, that here on Staten Island, believe it or not, despite the numbers that we know, and I know Scott's going to speak to this, the, the, the double-digit increase in hate crimes not only in America, but around the world, whether it's in Hungary, whether it's in France, uh, whether it's in uh, New Zealand, uh, whether it's uh, in Sri Lanka, uh, we have seen hate crimes that are either anti-Semitic or feed off of that. And they are hate crimes as well, based out of religion, uh, based out of misunderstanding, based out of simple hate. Uh, and there is no tolerance for that here. No reason for hate. And that's what a hate crime is. A hate crime is when you pick on someone and uh, is it a crime upon them because of who they are, how they look, how they dress, who they worship, who they love. Uh, and we will uh, prosecute every crime of hate in this borough, right, Ken? Uh, and, and there will be no plea bargaining in those cases. We will bring the top charge and the enhanced charge for hate crime. Uh, we've done that recently with the swastika case on the on the garage, uh, and we will continue to do that as well. So I want to make that clear. Now let me just ask my good friends who are here to say a few words, and then maybe we'll introduce everyone else. Right, Scott, you want to say a few words? Absolutely. First and foremost, I want to thank everyone for being here today. It's not just an anti-Semitic. Um, a crime wave that we're seeing throughout this country. It's, 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 it's anti anything that's against what these crazy people are thinking. It's the way you look, it's the way you pray, it's the way you think. 75 years ago, uh, a, a corporal, who was a corporal, decided that if we didn't have blue eyes and blonde hair, you were against the norm, and if you prayed to a certain God, you were against the norm. And not just 6 million people, but 11 million people were killed in a fit of rage. And 
probably, as, as the DA said, the most horrific concentrated hate crime in the existence of man. Um, and it's a shame that we're, we're experiencing that now. It's not to be, um, not to be over exaggerated that people are being killed in Pittsburgh, people are being killed in Toronto, people are being killed in New York, people are being killed in, in San Diego. This morning a young man was beaten up in Brooklyn and yelled at racial anti-Semitic epithets because he was a Jew in this country. Yet, I am happy and I'm proud to say that on this island, and in this city, for the most part, we have the greatest leaders possible. Our district attorney, our borough commander, our politicians, our community leaders, both in the Jewish sector and every other sector that are binding together and gathering together to make sure that we live with love and not with hate. So I just wanted to thank the district attorney and everyone and the, and, and, and the borough commander. Um, and of course, the president of Kogimendu Mirage, who is also the head of the RAA, who is a pillar of, of love and, and, and affection towards everybody. So thank you all for being here and I appreciate the opportunity to speak. Thank you. Thank you very much, Scott. So uh, I'm going to go in size order and ask the assemblyman to say a few <laughs> words and then go to our borough commander and then we'll come back to you later, okay? And then we'll ask everyone else to say a few words. Thank, thank you, uh, District Attorney McMahon and uh, Kojo for bringing us together uh, to send a strong message that we are against hate and we are united every time somebody does attack one of our houses of worship. You know, I you know also wanted to send my condolences uh, to the family members and friends of, of the victim and those that were injured as a result of this attack. You know, I as I said a few weeks ago, hate toward one group of people is hate toward everybody i think you know and the fact that we're coming together to send a strong message i think sends a message in itself and i just want to again thank the da and kojo for bringing us together and sending us thanks to charles very well said thank you so chief hey, good afternoon um to echo what the district attorney said if you commit a hate crime in staten island uh we will investigate we will find you we will arrest you and you'll be prosecuted to the full extent that the law allows there's no room for hate in New York City. There's no room for hate in Staten Island. I believe that all people should be free to go about their business and free from fear, especially when they go to their place of worship. We work with the community to keep everyone safe, no matter what they're doing, no matter what religion they practice, or if they choose to practice no religion at all, as the Constitution allows. We work to keep them safe. We ask the community to join us in sharing responsibility for that public safety by being our eyes and ears. If something doesn't look right, if something unsettles you, call us. Let us come and check it out. Help us keep you safe. Thank you, Rabbi Morosnik, our executive director of Kojo. Thank you, Rabbi. Thank you, Mr. Attorney. Rabbi reminded me that Joe Mashallah this evening, as Scott pointed it out, Mark, 76 years ago, Warsaw, April 19th, which corresponds to this year's calendar on the date, at the same time, we the basic date. The distinction between 76 years ago and today is where you have law enforcement, the district attorney, elected officials, clergy, the rabbi, the imam, the chief, all coming together to say we are not afraid, we're going to protest. Sadly, we stood by the Albanian Cultural Center. Charles that morning, some of Charles and with the Imam, we protested New Zealand. We had recently Sri Lanka. We had in Pittsburgh. We had unfortunately San Diego. But the message has to resonate that all good people who stand here today that represent the different ethnicities of this island. We have we don't we breathe the same air? Don't we enjoy the sunshine? Don't we have the same blood in our bodies? And the message is clear. Unlike 76 years ago back, we're not going to tolerate it. And to those who want to live in a hateful society, leave. we are not welcome here. So we God bless the district attorney. God bless Chief Corey. God bless the rabbi. God bless all of you for taking the courageous stand to stand there to say this will not be tolerated. That's the only rabbi. solution. Amen. Rabbi Lambert, our host, trying to top that. <laughs> We live in a phenomenal, wonderful city of New York. And we all know that the borough of Staten Island is by far the most beautiful borough and place to live. The most beautiful thing about our country, or our borough, is that we're standing over here, elected officials, some of the 
that represents the law, the officers, my brother, I don't know how many times we hang out together. How often can they grab me and me and my hang out together? We call each other off and we go to a family sit down. We don't drink together because he's not allowed to. Under the table, something else. But we get along. Just the fact we're all here together. This is the beautiful part of our country. And if the world would just look at us and all those that hate each other, there's nothing wrong with getting along. It's a beautiful idea, it's a beautiful country. So thank God we're all together. And I want to thank our district attorney for calling this meeting. Thank you, John. Thank you. And our partners and co Thank you. And Imam Tahir. Uh, I'm honored to be here amongst all the brothers and sisters here that we stand united against hate. And uh, what unites us in this country so many, so much, and so beautiful that uh, I don't think we uh, have any chance in this uh, society of ours that we are very proud of. Uh, God bless you all. We are here to stand with our dear brothers and to celebrate with them. And uh, we will stand with you any path of the way that you guys do. Thank you. Is there anything that can be done legislatively? There's no question that the laws can be tough, and you're balancing, uh, you know, the constitutional protection of free speech, but free speech does not allow hateful speech, harmful speech, or insightful speech. Uh, so we do quite a lot of our research and, and analysis through uh, social media, and we will continue to do that. And I don't want to speak for it, but I know the assemblymen, where they write the laws in Albany in this area, are certainly looking at that as well. So, you know, I know that um, a lot of the social media um, agencies already have, um, you know, strict policies on this matter, right? And they have some sort of um, protocols where they have to remove any sort of hateful speech. And my concern here is that, you know, sometimes it's not being done quick enough, right? And I don't know if it's a, a matter of staffing or whatever the case is, is um, it, it shouldn't be accepted purely. Um, I did see actually right before this press conference that uh, Facebook, you know, actually banned a few um, personal profiles of people that have, um, you know, highlighted hateful speech in the past. And I think that's a step toward the right direction. So, you know, I, I, what we have to see here, right, because we don't want, like, a lot of, of course, government overreach. If these folks don't get their act together, we at the legislative end will need to step up and do our jobs.